process to me. He did. About 30 minutes into the process, he said to me, um, in a very distressed way, um, by the way, we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me, and clearly in these photographs were structures, uh, mushroom-shaped buildings, spherical buildings, and towers. And at, at that point, I was very concerned because I knew we were working in comp- Hey, what's up, guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. So the man that you just saw there in that small video clip was none other than Carl Wolf who was at one point in time during the Apollo moon missions when we were sending men to the moon. He was the director of intelligence at Langley, Virginia. Now at that time, most people don't realize that Langley was the center for getting all of the data and imagery from the lunar orbiter that was placed up in orbit around the moon it was actually a reconnaissance orbiter because that's what it was sent up there to do to do reconnaissance for the military so that they could get a full spectrum of images back to earth for the military to study what exactly was there because they knew that there were structures on the moon specifically the far side or the dark side or the back side whichever you want to call it it was one of the main reasons why they put the lunar reconnaissance orbiter up into orbit around the moon so they could get images of that back side and it wasn't until around 30 years later after his retirement that mr wolf came out and revealed that during one instance at the Langley office, he had been called in after some NSA photo equipment had failed. And when he was brought in to Langley, he revealed verbatim that one of the dark room attendants, which if you don't know, the dark room is where they would hang the photographs in order for them to become full color. And while with this attendant, they explained to Mr. Wolf that they had indeed discovered a base on the back side of the moon. I just thought it fitting to show his small little clip as it pertains to the breaking news we now have today, which is that China has now successfully landed the first ever lunar rover down on the back side of our moon and having released a set of four images here that you are going to see of that landing and what has been even the larger question among those who have been emailing me for the past couple of days wondering when I was going to post a video about this. And it wasn't just because they landed on the far side of the moon and uh, were the first to land on the far side of the moon. No, much further than that. They want to know, and I'm sure many of you guys want to know, well, now that we have someone on the back side of the moon where it is said that all of these alien structures and bases and activity actually occurs, is China or have they already begun doing recon work around the area to uncover these alien structures that have been said to have been lingering on the back side of the moon since the very first Apollo mission? And ultimately, what will the Chinese release? What photographs will they have for us? And what will never see the light of day? Those are the questions I have for you. But just to start with exactly what has occurred here, on Wednesday night, January 2nd, the Chang-4 rover and its stationary lander companion pulled off of the first ever soft touchdown on the lunar far side coming to a rest inside the 115-mile-wide Von Karman crater. The six-wheeled rover, known as U-2-2, isn't pausing to catch its breath. As a newly released photo shows, U-2-2 has already put a fair bit of space between itself and the lander, trundling over near the rim of a small crater on the floor of the Von Karman, which itself lies within an even larger impact feature, the 1,550-mile-wide South Pole Aitken Basin. And so we'll go over these uh, photos very quickly here. First, we have a, a photo taken from the lander as they are descending down towards the moon. It looks very similar to the way they recorded the, their landings during the Apollo missions. And uh, you can see some videos of those, but uh, sadly, we only get images at this point. Uh, but we definitely see what appears to be the moon down below. 
We'll go to the next image. As they get closer and closer to the moon, you begin to see uh, more definition in the sand below. See more rocks, more shadows, more divots and cracks in the sand. Just a whole lot more features of the lunar landscape. Our next photo is of them now perfectly landed down on the lunar surface. And again, notice how brown in color uh, the lunar soil seems to be. And I've noticed this in almost every uh, Chinese lunar mission. Whenever they go to the moon, it always seems like the dirt is a, a totally separate color from the dirt or the lunar regolith that was there when we went so many years ago and so many times where you had more of a white or a dirty white color. But here, it, it appears more brown like dirt. Now, this may simply be because of the lights used on the rovers, or it may simply be a, a different part of the moon where the regolith looks, uh, you know, a bit more brown. Simple as that. Nonetheless, we still have these photos here. Now, let's go to the next one where the rover is hot off the lander. He is out wanting to explore, uh, heading down to what looks like a small crater in the distance. And, um, yeah. It looks like your typical lunar moon photo. Very similar, if not identical, to the lunar photos that we got back during the Apollo missions. And as I said before, the big question isn't these photos here. We've seen these a dime a dozen. Every time there's a moon mission, uh, we, we know what to look for. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. We want to see all of those strange objects that have said to have been on the back side of the moon. The part of the moon that we never see. Now, when uh, the Apollo astronauts went to the moon, uh, they did orbit around the back side. And in fact, I'm going to show you here in a second uh, some of the more mysterious things that have been captured or seen around the dark side of the moon uh, that makes this new China landing that much more exciting because of what they could find there. But as I was saying, uh, during some of the Apollo missions, you would have one man up in the lunar orbiter, and you would have the other men down on the moon. And when they would fly back behind the moon, they would lose radio contact with Earth. And so there would be nothing but silence until they came out from the other side. And there is one particular video where although there was no radio silence as they went back behind the moon, these lunar modules had on board these data recorders that would listen in and would transcribe what was being said or heard. And while NASA has never made any of these audio recordings available to the public, we do have some transcripts from this far side of the moon crew dialogue and that are available in the NASA archives. Now, though heavily censored, these transcripts offer a glimpse into some of the less guarded dialogue that took place inside the limb when the astronauts were out of radio contact with Houston. Apollo 10, Houston, uh, two minutes to LOS. Uh, everybody here says, got to see. Okay, and we'll see you right on the other side in orbit. Uh, Roger, 76-22-55.
And so there you have uh, the transcripts of the totally perplexed astronauts talking of hearing this music on the backside of the moon that they heard multiple times in multiple orbits. It was heard not only by the astronauts, but through both orbiters, as well as what have been recorded sound-wise. And we've never heard the sound of this so-called space music before. Now, it's also been said that the transcripts have been edited at one point in time. Someone who was very close to one of the astronauts within the transcripts you guys just read apparently did not talk like that and did not say the words uh, regarding the sound as uh, seeming like a whistle or a whistling sound. And what he had actually said was that the sound had sounded like a choir or women singing and not a simple whistling, which was then edited over the original later in the transcript. Now, apart from the strange music incident, we also have many other photographs and videos of strange things happening around our moon, which I'm going to end this video with today. And before I jump off here, I'd like to leave you with one of my favorite quotes about our moon that sort of sums up all of the strangeness and all of the intrigue we have with it. And so I'd like to recite that for you guys today. So without further ado, here we go. The moon is bigger than it should be apparently older than it should be, and much lighter in mass than it should be. It occupies an unlikely orbit and is so extraordinary that all existing explanations for its presence are fraught with difficulties and none of them could be considered remotely watertight. We cannot help but come to the conclusion that the moon by all rights ought not be there. And so with the well-deserved excitement of the Chinese space program, we will continue searching and analyzing photos and videos of which you're about to see here with high hopes that China will do the right thing and make whatever lunar findings they do have public so that once and for all, we can fully say that these whispers of strange activity on the dark side of the moon, these bases, these towers, these structures, this free movement of flying saucers and other vehicles can finally be pushed from a mere whisper and into the concrete, solid, validated halls of ufology history. And so on that count, thank you guys for stopping in by. Hope you enjoy. Uh, the rest of this video and all of these lunar anomalies that have been caught over the years. And lastly, I'd like to thank you all for pushing us past 2 million subscribers last night. Secure Team, now the number one UFO and alien related truth seeking channel on YouTube, dare I say online. We are worldwide well known and we are going to make 2019 a year to remember for this topic and community and all the hard work that we have all put in. So with that, thank you again, and let's keep it going.